Hello, we're Wex Photo Video and we're here today in the Isle of Skye with Tommy Morrison. Uh, we're going to be looking at travel and lifestyle photography and this is a, a deep dive so there's going to be a different video coming out every week to show you how to get the best travel pictures. So Tommy, could you tell us a little bit about what you do? So I'm a travel and lifestyle photographer from Scotland. I basically go adventures to lot beautiful locations and create memories that I'm proud of. That's really cool. And then um, what inspired you to first start travelling? What do you like about travelling? Um, I was inspired by finding people on YouTube. Um, I, I saw what they were doing, like travel photographers, and I, I really wanted to do that. Because um, I saw the, the locations that they had went to and stuff, and um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. That's really cool. And um, um, how did you first take a picture? So like, what's your story that led you to pick up a camera? Um, I first picked up a camera when I went a walk with my big cousin and his wife. Um, we went a walk to Kilburn Country Park and she had a camera with her and she got me to take a nice family photograph of her. And it was that moment that I decided I wanted to get a family photo of myself, for myself. And um, I've still never got around to doing that yet. Um, <laughs> five years later, I've ended up traveling and taking photographs for myself and obviously doing some work. So um, apologies guys, obviously it's super windy here because we are in the Isle of Skye um, but as you can see the view is beautiful enough so hopefully you can forgive us. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your Instagram. So you put your work on Instagram, how did that all start? What inspired you to go, let's do this? I just saw that other people were posting on Instagram and a lot of my friends and family followed me there originally um, so I decided why not share my adventures to them through Instagram which um, ultimately turned out to be the best thing I've ever done because more and more people started like seeing my name and stuff and seeing my work. So you got yourself onto Instagram yep. and then talk to me a little bit about that first time that someone reached out to you to ask you if you wanted to do a paid job. Your very first, very first um, paid job. So after posting on Instagram for a wee while, some of my landscape stuff, a company called JJ Monaghan Watches reached out to me and they offered me some watches to shoot. Um, in exchange for content, so I was pretty pleased with that and that made me realise that I could maybe make a career out of this um, which, and I just kept on going. And um, do a lot of your jobs come in through Instagram? Yeah, probably 90% of them come through Instagram. That's really cool. And do you, would you say like it's a good way to build that network? Like do you like other people's work or is it oh, yeah, very definitely. much like interactive? How do you go about using it? Uh, Social media is called social media for that reason. It's been social, so you engage with people, like, comment on their work, and they'll comment on your work and stuff. And it's just about building a community on it. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, we spoke a minute ago about you mentioned YouTube. Yeah. So, um, how do you find the learning process of photography? So, I think a lot of photographers always seem like it's easy, and they've just always done it. And I know what you're thinking. How do I get there? So like, what do you think about the learning abilities and just the, you know, the continuation of learning your practice? For me, um, YouTube is definitely a big asset in learning photography. It's um, helped me get to where I am just now by constantly watching. I still do it to this day. I watch tutorials every day and something new that I don't know how to do and practice it. And it helps me progress. And for people who look like myself who couldn't go to college or university to learn it, it's definitely a, a good avenue to, to learn. So when you're looking at your Instagram feed, as you mentioned, there's these beautiful, stunning shots of tra travel locations. Um, do you think that's, is that every picture you take? No, not at all. Um, my Instagram feed, just I just showcase my landscapes, but um, I'm actually a quite a diverse photographer. I can do lifestyle products, cinematic style shooting as well. And um, I'm going to be incorporating a lot, a lot of that more in my, my feed going forward this year. Yeah. And rolling on to that, so. And do you think like you post every picture you take no. or do you think it's like a selection process? Instagram, you just showcase the cream of the cream on Instagram. It's like a lot of people like, watching this video will not, or who's on Instagram don't see actually that a lot of your photos aren't even Instagram worthy, as we call it. Um, it's only the best of the best that go on Instagram because that's essentially your portfolio. And that's where like, if you're getting work for, for myself and most people, it comes through Instagram and Instagram is basically your portfolio. And how do you select those images? So how do you sort of look at those images and decide what to put up there? 
just whatever my, I like composition wise in the shot um, so when I'm going through my photos on Lightroom if I see a shot which really catches my eye due to the composition I'll um, five star that one and then what I'll do at the end of the an hour later if I've went through them I'll, I'll start editing my five stars and then out of them I'll just pick the best one that I feel and I'll post that one up. That's really interesting and I think super helpful as well. You definitely don't need to always post every picture and every picture you take isn't going to be amazing. That's just life. Um, so that's a really good tip for people to have. Do you think you're going to be doing more commercial work or are you definitely keen on keeping your passion in that mix? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have to keep your passion work for yourself as well because that's what, at the end of the day, that's what keeps you motivated. And then, because if you do work that you don't enjoy, it becomes a job and then essentially you won't enjoy doing what you do. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think you're, in the next couple of years, going to take this to like another level where you're working more on uh, landscape things or are you working more on lifestyle? What do you think is your target for the future? I'm just going to keep my avenues broad because I like to do a, a mix. I don't want to just focus on one niche. Um, again, that helps me improve myself if I can try go down different paths as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess my next question would be, what's coming up for you in terms of the commercial side? So I know you've got some exciting stuff underway at the moment. Yep, I've just started a, a commercial job with Eden Mill, the gin company in Scotland. And in April this year, I'm going to Croatia to work with a camper van company. Um, also, me and one of my friends, indefinitely lost. He's um, us two are going to Italy in the Dolomites. We're hosting a beginners workshop. Where we're going to be teaching uh, beginners what we know, and help them get to where we are, and uh, hopefully leapfrog us, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And that is what the community is about, guys. So if you're taking photos, you really want to work on building each other up and working together to make sure that everybody is succeeding. Yep. Um, and if you don't have paid shoots and people aren't approaching you, then do some work in your own time. You know, take shots of brands, tag them on Instagram, try and make sure that people can see your work. Um, if you're good enough, hopefully they'll drop you a line. Yeah. Um, so what's your favourite project you've worked on so far for brands? Is there something for you that was really memorable? Um, I really liked my Huawei job just because it was, um, I really like Huawei phones and I was, I was really excited when they reached out to me and um, sent me that email saying they would like to work with me. Um, so that was a good achievement for myself and also um, movement watches because a lot of my favourite photographers who I look, who look up to, um, they had worked, they worked with that company and that was one of my goals was to try and work with that brand and I achieved that goal maybe two or three years ago like pretty quickly. So. So I was quite happy with that. For those who haven't seen the work, could you tell us about what you did for them? Yeah, the Movement Watches sent me out uh, one of their watches and I got some lifestyle shots of them um, and some shots of the watch sitting on the beach at sunset. Um, me wearing the watch um, with Huawei, they sent me their phone out and I actually made a, a short video and some lifestyle photos of me using the phone. Um, so over the last few years, you have travelled to so many different places and you've taken such beautiful shots. Is there a place for you that you just want to keep coming back to? Is this it? Yeah, the Isle of Skye, I, I fell in love with that when I first came here three years ago. And I've been back numerous times. Um, I just can't get enough of the place. As you can see, it's, it blows you away. What is it about Skye that really interests you? Is it the dramatic landscapes or the juxtaposition of the mountaintops? It's a bit of everything really, it's what you mentioned and also you get such a diverse um, stuff to shoot basically. Um, you can get highland cows, leading lines by the roads, the beautiful mountains, there's umpteen waterfalls and I really love the history, um, it's Viking heritage as well. A lot of the town names still have the Viking name attached to it so it's an interesting place. That's really interesting. What about the history really stands out to you? I like Vikings, really. <laughs> Me too. I missed up. <laughs> the Isle of Skye is not just rich in landscapes and beautiful waterfalls, it also has a really interesting history. Um, I suggest, or I highly recommend that you do some reading up about it. Um, it goes way back to the Viking era, and a lot of the town names still incorporate the Viking name to this day. It's not changed. And um, so, here we are. Obviously, as you can see, the weather is sort of playing friendly today, but it is a little bit... <laughs> A little bit dramatically windy, I might fall over. So um, what are we going to be doing while we're here? Where are we going? 
So right now we're currently in Sligacken. Um, over there is the old Sligacken Bridge. That's a really nice, interesting composition. We're also going to head up to the Old Man of Stoa, the Needle at the Kerrang, and also hopefully head to Milk Falls. And we'll try and squeeze in a few more places around about Portree as well, because that's where we're based just now. Yeah, absolutely. And are you? what are you planning to teach us? What are we going to learn? How to shoot bangers, basically. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm hoping to show you um, leading lines, because that's what I look for mostly in my photographs, is leading lines and some foreground elements, just basically compositional techniques and also how I like to use aperture priority. I use aperture priority basically because you only have a microsecond to capture that shot. So if you're fiddling about with manual mode and you turn around, just for instance, that Robin shot uh, I posted on Instagram, um, I wouldn't have got that if I was using manual, just for the simple fact that the Robin was only there for half a second. So I quickly turned around, shot it and pro tips basically. Yeah, absolutely. Could you tell us a little bit about what we're going to cover? So as I mentioned, guys, obviously there's a set of videos coming out, so you can tune in every week. So what are we going to be discussing? So whilst we're here, we're going to be covering preparation and planning, which is extremely important for safety, and location scouting as well, and that, that will help we maximise our time on location. The gear we're going to need, such as camera equipment and also hiking equipment, and um, different shooting and compositional techniques to help uh, get better shots and stand out from everyone else. Perfect. And so by the end of this masterclass, hopefully you'll be able to go out somewhere, maybe a little less windy, and take some amazing pictures like Tommy does. We'll put a link to his website in the description as well so you can check out his work. But otherwise, let's get started. Mm -hmm.